Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Tuesday, May 25th. Taking a quick look at futures, uh, not a lot going on. Large caps and small caps both up about 0.25%. NAS up half a percent. Gold and silver mostly flat. And oil and copper both down about a half a percent. On the macro front today, got a Got a quite a few data points, mostly centered on housing. Uh, we've got uh, Case Schiller, new home sales and prices. We've got the Red Book at nine o'clock. We've got Consumer Confidence at ten, and then we've got the Richmond Fed. I think at eleven o'clock this morning. So a few data points, and of course we've got Fed speakers. Uh, I made mention in the title of uh, today's uh, video, uh, a flock of fed doves. And I didn't really think much of yesterday, noting that other than that four fed speakers would be talking and, you know, they said all the right things. I mean, that's the only reason, you know, I can think of for, you know, the move that we saw, but as you know, I'm not all into trying to find reasons, but that, that was the narrative that seemed to gravitate to the market yesterday where uh, we, saw, we saw prices rise uh, led by uh, big cap tech. So uh, let's look at, let's look at uh, the indexes and fat man, see what we got going on for this morning. Uh, starting with the SPY two-hour, we have rocketed up off the bottom, uh, a double bottom with bullish divergence on the indicators. And now we're up here at resistance at 420. Uh, not a whole lot of nuance to this. I mean, 420 is your pivot. You break out above 420, uh, certainly be long and look for uh, a little bit of resistance at 421.50. And then after that, it's it's new highs. Uh, below 420, we may see a little bit of a retreat back to 418. Even, you know, you should remain open to the idea that, you know, we have an open gap here that if you lose 418, you come back and you test the top of the gap. Most often you would expect a bounce there on the first tag, but if it doesn't hold, then you got a gap fill all the way back to 415. So stay nimble, but I think uh, uh, as it stands, no reason to get, you know, bearish unless price leads you in that direction. So uh, 420 is your pivot with uh, those uh, upside objectives and downside potential pullback areas noted. Yeah, same thing on, on SPY, uh, 30 minute chart. We saw price come right up to our level yesterday afternoon and then a dump into the close. And I, I wouldn't make too much of that, you know, in that last half hour, uh, I mean, position squaring, you know, short-term traders taking profits, whatever. Um, but here, right in the middle of the range, you know, we're going to open. I mean, we're up, open up, you know, 0.25%. We're going to open right here, right below 420 again uh, this morning. That'll leave a little baby gap below. Be, be cognizant of that. But uh, again, 420 is the pivot. And here are your uh, pullback targets on any on any kind of weakness. I did want to point out, and I forgot, this double bottom had a measured move of 2.8% uh, from the double bottom low to the double bottom high, which is right here. And if you project that out from a, a 217 breakout, that points to a target of 429. That might be a number you want to just circle on a notepad. That would be the technical target of this structure, this double double bottom structure. That may 
come in handy down the road. Doesn't mean we need to get there. Uh, these things are just pro projections and measured move targets, but uh, you know they're there for a reason. They uh, oftentimes they do work. So moving on to the cues here again. While we're on the topic of double bottoms, we had the uh, the very same structure here. Uh, we had a, an initial low. We come up to 327, get rejected, and come back to 317. There was divergence there. We had a low here on the first low, and on the second low, at much higher levels of RSI, or excuse me, PPO and RSI. That's your bullish divergence. And uh, that's always something to look for in your in your charting when you get what looks like a double bottom always look up to your indicators and see if you can see any uh, bullish divergence present and that's a hint that they're not going to take it any lower or there's a much much higher probability that they're going to bounce it with positive divergence when you get it but anyhow the measured move on this setup is three three point one percent. I've gone ahead and projected that here to a measured move target of three thirty seven, and you can tell that this this setup is much different than the spy. Why on the spy that measured move target points to new highs, significant new highs. You know, going from from 420 to to 429 here the measured move target only brings us to 237 and that's actually a resistance point because that's where this failed on the last try uh, at that level so we'll see if this gets fulfilled and then see what happens at 337 uh, but as far as today this uh, 334 uh, is your first line of overhead resistance and I've got a minor support level here at 332. I think that's your uh, pivot on the two hour chart keeping in mind the uh, gap from yesterday uh, has not been tested or, or obviously not been filled yet. So if we drop down below 332 there's that chance that we come down here to 329 uh, and fill that level. I, I think there's a, a bigger level here on the 30 minute chart where we've got some large volume over price bars here that may have some support at 330 on any kind of pullback. Remember, we had tested that level uh, not yesterday, but the day before where it uh, failed. So That'll probably be a level where you'd see some kind of reaction here at 330. But uh, a move up to 334 would fill the gap. And then we've got little resistance levels at each, um, uh, each dollar increment above, as you can see there. Um, IWM two hour continues to have a little problem here at 222.50. Uh, we had a rejection here, here, and here. A lot of chop in between. That's why I've drawn this a little different than usual. Hard to find a pivot between this range between 220.50 and 222.50. A lot of chop going on in there. If you're, you know, nimble and making money doing it you know knock yourself out trading within this range others others that are more interested in more of a duration type trade wait till you get a breakout above 222.50 then you can get long and look for a three dollar move up to 225 and a half uh, likewise if you break below 220.50, then uh, you can look towards 218. And so uh, 
you know, kind of wait for that range to break would be my suggestion, unless you're really, really nimble. And you can see it here on the 30 minute chart. You know, just a lot of, a lot of back and forth in here. Here's that level where it got rejected the last couple days. Here was a rejection. So, I mean, you can pick your spot where you think you want to get long or short, but the range is pretty well defined there. You can, I mean, you can use, you know, this is a pivot down. You can move that down to here if you want to 2050 as a level that if it breaks, you want to be short or 223 here on the long side to get long. But uh, seems like IWM has been soggy lately. And although it's grinding higher, we have met some overhead resistance that's, that might take a while to uh, uh, get through. Uh, before we dive into Fat Man, I want to thank any new visitors to my content. I really appreciate you being here. If you like having the levels laid out for you and having a little uh, game plan presented each and every day, hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell. That way you won't miss any of my content. And you can look over in the show notes. Uh, I have links to uh, visit the blog site uh, and uh, another link to uh, register for all my content. And, and while I'm on the on the topic of the blog site, I've got some interesting information this morning that, that I'm not going to discuss here in the video. Number one, uh, there's a nice graphic there that shows retail traders losing interest in the market, starting to see outflows out of the Schwab's and Robinhood accounts uh, as you know the market becomes a two-way market instead of straight up. Uh, also, some interesting developments in the reverse repo market. Uh, too big a topic to, to get into here, but go to the website, tradersprofitcompass.com. You'll see an interesting graphic and a write-up on uh, strange happenings in the overnight reverse repo market that's uh, worth a read. Uh, and of course, longtime listeners, thanks for being here. Give me a thumbs up and a positive comment. Pass the link along and uh, help our cause get out to more people. So moving on to Fat Man, they really led the way yesterday uh, as far as up moves, driving the market. Uh, gap and go yesterday on Facebook. I think I think if it holds 323, you're fine being long and look for uh, 326.50 and then 330 on the upside. You know, if you if you lose three. 2350 then you're vulnerable to a pullback into into 31950 so be nimble uh, be nimble have that level marked and you know I would certainly be putting a stop you know if you if you took advantage of this yesterday or even had uh, been long through here, that would be a significant pullback, uh, you know, three and a half dollars to here, and then possibly even a gap test or a gap fill. So if you're a short-term trader, you don't want to just sit idly by while they pull three or four dollars out of the uh, price of the stock. You can either choose to, you know, take a tactical short here or just say, hey, we're in the midst of a, a bull run in Facebook. I'd rather be looking looking for attractive long entries than trying to get cute on a tactical short. Of course, that's just that's just uh, personal preference. That's not uh, anything other than that. Just know that if you lose this support level, chances are you're going to pull back into 320, 319. Uh, Apple. Yesterday in the midday note, we talked about uh, Apple needing to clear this 128. You can see, you know, pretty healthy liquidation into the close. 
uh, I noticed pre-market we're up a little bit, but still under this 128. I think that's that's set up to be a major pivot level. And let me show you why on the daily chart. 128 is where the 20 and 50 EMAs uh, converge. So if price can take out this 128, uh, which would be on the daily, breaking above and recapturing these EMAs, I think that would be a great place if you wanted to have, you know, a duration trade. Something went out a couple of weeks, three weeks, uh, you know, depending on how far you wanted to look out, I think you would have a good chance to make a run at 135, 138. And then if everything went your way, possibly up even into the mid 140s if the market went, you know, bananas for, for whatever reason. Um, but regardless, recapturing those EMAs is always uh, an important technical event. And when you're looking at your charts, you know, broadly speaking, there's been a lot of rug pulls out there, as we know. So when you're looking at software or you're looking at EV or you're looking at crypto, where price has had the, the rug pulled out of it, as price makes its way back up, Look for those places where price can recapture a moving average, whether that be the 8-day or the 20-day or the 50-day or the 200-day. Those are always important milestones after, after a drawdown has happened. And depending on your personal style and where the lateral resistance comes into play, like if you can get a location where the moving averages coincide with a lateral resistance level and then price is able to power through that, that's often a great place to re-engage long again because then you've got the moving averages and you know a trend line or lateral support to shoot against. Uh, and then you'll have a really objective uh, entry location. So, okay, let's uh, move on to Tesla. Nice breakout of the range. What I've done here is extend this downtrend channel from up here along with the midpoint line. Remember we said whenever you drop below a range, it's bearish. Whenever you break out of a range, it's bullish. So now if you know price can make a move, into this prior channel, your objective can be finding its way to the top of the channel. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, the market got really strong. You come up here, you know, you maybe you bounce off down, come up to the midpoint, you know, in this 630, 640 area, have a little trouble, have a reaction and then grind its way up to the top of the channel. And you can see here how the midpoint often acts as support and resistance. You know, coming up here, bottom of the channel, midpoint rejection, midpoint breakout, midpoint support, rejection at the top, support at the midpoint, down at the bottom, you get the idea. Here you can see that midpoint acted as resistance here on the way down. So that midpoint should still have some muscle memory to it along with these lateral resistance areas. So at least that gives you a roadmap where to expect uh, resistance, slow down, trouble, however you want to phrase it. The one thing you don't want to see if you're a bull is a move back into this prior trading range. And then of course your target is the bottom of the box at 560. But as it stands now, 
you can stay long against uh, 595 and uh, see if uh, Tesla can power up. Microsoft, nice gap and go. Right up to this $1 gap. So that's your pivot, 251. Anything above 251 targets a gap fill to 252. And then 253 is your next overhead target where there was uh, resistance here, resistance here, and support here. So uh, 253 should be a, um, you know, uh, be a highlight on your chart. Uh, if there's still power in the market, this will probably fill. And I think we grind our way back up to 253, which would be much more of a, uh, you know, a serious test with resistance. Uh, if it gets rejected here, you can see a pullback into 248.50, 249, something like that on the way back. Amazon uh, spent most of the day, you know, hovering here at uh, 32.50. That is your uh, pivot above, I think you're fine to 3,300 below, favors uh, a drift or a pullback. I wanted to show you something significant on, uh, oh, I messed it up here. Here's the daily chart. We've got a scenario very much like Apple. Notice here, and it's a little hard to see, but you've got a major convergence of three things. One, you've got the top of the box. Two, you've got a uh, uh, the eight day, the 50 day, and the 20 day all coming in at 3250. That's a lot different than it was back here, right? Uh, price was above everything. Here it was below everything. And now on the way back up, all those moving averages will be resistance, as will the top of the box at 3250. So, make a long story short. Number one, if it's going to reject, it's going to reject right here. Uh, you know, the buyers will just have too much overhead resistance. All those moving averages, the top of the box, and it'll come back down. Or, we're in a new up cycle and it'll pop out. And if there was ever a time, you know, in recent memory, where you'd want to get long Amazon for a duration trade, it would be on a breakout of this box and a recapture of all these moving averages. Then all those moving averages in the top of the box will become support. And whenever you have a cluster like that, uh, it makes it even more powerful because you've got three moving averages now instead of just one. So if you're looking for, you know, a multi-week, a multi-month long on Amazon, that would be a really tight entry if you get a breakout above 3250 that can hold I think that would be uh, a great chance for a run back up to uh, 3550 or beyond. Google, nice day. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, gap and go filled this gap. Uh, the reason I leave it there is because the bottom of this gap uh, will have muscle memory. If you get a pullback into 2350, that fails, then your next level is 2330 for support. Um, I expect the top of this gap to hold on any kind of little weakness today. And if you were not in Google, but you wanted to be, that's a place where I would take a shot long with a stop just below. And if you get stopped out, there's nothing to do except get out. Don't uh, don't hope and pray because the next level is going to be 2330. So if you wanted to get long and you got stopped here 
and you weren't interested in flipping short, set your target down here at 2330. And then that would be your next objective level to take a shot long with, uh, with a stop below. Netflix uh, really didn't do much yesterday. Uh, but what it did do is, is uh, it held 500. And that's all you're looking for it to do. You could actually box this in. You know, put that little box around it like I always like to do. And then view this move as the flagpole. And then this is your flag. And you know what they say. Bull flags fly at half staff. So if you project this move halfway up the flagpole, you would get something looks to be a little more than 515. And if that happens, then you're into this $35 gap. So we start the whole process again. So anyways, building out what looks like a bull flag, you can either get long against 500 or you can say, you know what? I'll wait for price to break higher from the bull flag at five, you know, 504, 505. I'll get long there. Might have a little resistance at 50750, but then look for 515. So depending on how you want to play it, those are a couple strategies. Uh, semiconductors did well yesterday. We gapped higher powered through this big level at 242.50, even made a push to 245, then a little dump into the close. I still think you want to be long against 242.50 and look for uh, a move to this gap from 247 to 250. And with any luck, uh, you can get a, you know, if there's, I don't want to say final push, another push to come up and fill this gap. And then this will be a major level. And if, you know, if, if it were gonna reject, that would be, you know, that would be a place where there's the potential of, okay, you know, the bull run is over. Then we have a, you know, a, a sizable pullback and then recalibrate everything but if there's still some power in this move i think you can i think you can find 250 knowing that there's going to be a little resistance and probably a hesitation at 247 i wouldn't let that bother you if you were smart enough or good enough to buy this double bottom with bullish divergence see that second second bottom at a higher level than the first if you got low down here, you got time and money on your side, you're well to the good. You can tolerate some chop in this area, just stay long. But if you lost 242.50, I would uh, count your blessings and um, uh, recalibrate because that would figure on a move back towards this gap. And you don't want to give up, you know, $8 while you're waiting for all that to happen. So I think 242.50 is a really good level to watch. Uh, I wanted to make mention of uh, TLT. Wandering around, made a low, came up. Uh, the thing I wanted to point out is all these advances have been capped by the declining 50 EMA. And that's just where we're at right now. I have the 50 EMA at 138.80. I think a breakout here, recapturing the 50, would be rather significant since it's capped it the whole way down. Uh, and likewise, if it rejects, if if yields go higher and price comes back down again, you know, people will be talking about that, you know, in regards to 
rising interest rates and oh my god is that bad for tech and inflation and you know that whole thing so i think we're at a critical spot on tlt if you see uh price break higher that's going to be positive for for tech and bubble stocks if it breaks lower meaning higher interest rates that's going to be positive for cyclicals and banks and all that kind of stuff so let's wrap it up there I hope you found the information useful. Hope you have a good day of trading. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.